line up, you f***ing nerds. Who wants a shot at the champ? They bring the heat. Francis Ngannou is the hardest puncher in the history of fighting. They bring the knowledge. If you think this fight is going five rounds, you are out of your mind. They bring you the picks. The dog is getting it done in this one. We deliver every single week. We're bringing the heat, ladies and gentlemen. The Money Line. Don't miss it on the MMA Experts channel each week. The Money Line, we are live with a special edition of the show. Right. We're doing Rising and Bellator. Mike Finch always said he'd never pick the Bellator card. He obviously <laughs> is affiliated with them, but I got him to do it for Ryzen versus Bellator. I think it's a fair middle ground. It's a gray area, Mike Finch. It's, it, it is perfect. Not even a gray area, AJ. I'm all in. I'm breaking down these fights. I'm telling you guys exactly what I think. Yes, it is true. I work for Bellator, so I can't usually give you my predictions, but it's Bellator versus Ryzen. So come on, man. We gotta, we gotta tell the truth and dig into these fights. I'm hyped for it. My friends who work for Bellator are in Tokyo. How Love dare it. they not bring me in a suitcase or something, but at least I get to break these fights down with you, AJ. I saw your breakdown earlier in the week. Super fun to talk to you about these, man. They're fun matchups, and it's just something different for the MMA world. Don't you guys want to see champion versus champion fights? This shit is different, AJ. You got to like it. I like it a lot, especially because it's in the ring. I feel like I have a little yeah. bit of a ring bias because I feel like when I watch the uh, Pride FC days and I look at those events, I love the vibe. And Saitama Super Arena, even though it's rising, they've brought like the same energy that Pride FC once brought. It's going to be loud in there, man. You've got the Bellator GOAT, Patricio Pitbull. They brought AJ McKee out. Juan Archuleta just looked insane in his beatdown over Enrique Barzola. They brought him. I mean, Bellator brought some heat to him, and they're facing off against Ryzen's best. You know, these are some of the best submission fighters in MMA, period, on this card, matched up against the Bellator talent. So, come on, man. I wish I was there. Yeah, man, I wish you were there, bro. Can you imagine being in Tokyo? Holy shit. That's like a bucket list MMA event. Goal is a Ryzen event. I feel like I, I got to go over there and uh, see a fight, man. I know it's like, like Pride FC style. Like the energy is crazy. The kicks on the ground. And I do think that the viewer experience, and Mike, you're cage side at a ton of events. I feel like the viewer experience, is it better in the ring or the cage? That's something I'm always thinking about. Because like, hmm, if you're in the ring, and you're a few levels up, you know, you don't have even like really any barrier you're seeing directly in it. I know the cage for the most part on the higher levels at events you see pretty good, but I know cage sides sometimes there's, uh, I don't want to say like obstacles in the way, but like if the corner's there and stuff like that, what do you think about the viewing experience of the cage versus the ring? I feel like you know best because you're at a lot of events. I, so I do, I have, you know, commentary for HFC, XFO. I don't have to give you the whole list. I've worked for a lot of organizations. I've seen a lot of fist fights. They always put me cage side. So I am spoiled as hell. As far as like the average fan in the place, maybe a ring would be nicer to look through. Although if you're raised up a little bit, that's actually a trick, right? Everybody likes to pay for those expensive floor seats. Honestly, the secret is it's better to get up in that 100 section where you can look down on the cage a little bit. Um, but yeah, maybe the ring, right, might be better for those 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 floor seat those rich folks those famous people right justin timberlake i don't know i just remember dana white's rant on him that's why he came to mind but whoever's sitting there ringside um they, they're gonna have a little more trouble seeing in the cage that being said um i've done commentary for wako kickboxing yeah there's not a bad seat in the house when it's the ring here's the biggest difference aj the fact that when you shoot a takedown, there's nowhere to push somebody up against. It changes everything about these fights, arguably, and I'm sure some people are going to disagree with me on this. I think it's harder for wrestlers. I think it can make fights more exciting. I think that would be the biggest difference. Seeing there live how these cage fighters, guys who fought 20 fights in a cage having to adapt to the ring, that'd be the biggest difference I'd be looking out for. And I think it's going to come into play in our first fight of the night here. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how, you know, the more grappling heavy, well, I'm going to say wrestling heavy base guys do with the ring. I think it might favor the jujitsu guys a bit. And we got two really nasty practitioners at the top of the card. Even the early fights, everybody on the floor is pretty damn quality fighting and rising. What you see, sure. in my opinion, I just think the Japanese fighters overall, they seem to be like really quick on the mat, scrambly as hell, hard to control. I'm curious to see how it all looks, man. 
the jujitsu that I've seen uh, in Ryzen is very, very high level, man, especially in this main event. I mean, you know, um, you, you've got you've got, you know, and, and against AJ McKee. I mean, the, these guys are definitely going to have to mind their P's and Q's on the ground. I, I love the triangles I'm seeing. I love the arm bars I'm seeing just the bottom work, man. It reminds me of dream. It reminds me of old school pride back when, um, you know, let's be honest, the grappling's a lot better today. But, you know, back when fights could be scored more often for the guy who's fighting off of his back, throwing up submissions trying to work um nowadays especially in the ufc you see a lot of the wrestlers winning the fights with wrestling and ground and pound i'll tell you what aj i, I submitted all my opponents but i got one knockout of four submissions i much prefer a cage i much prefer being a grappler who can you know try to pressure you shoot and if you sprawl keep running you into that fence it's a big deal for somebody who wants a takedown it's a lot crazier out there in that freaking ring man it's it, you you feel like you're gonna get kneed in the face more often you feel like you know that uh that you're just gonna push them out of the ropes and have to reset so it, it should tangibly change these things man it'll be fun to watch and see cage fighters against ring fighters it'll definitely be uh something i want to learn from watching how everybody does right yeah yeah, dude, it's going to be sweet. I can't wait for this one. I do want to bring up some of the chat for the people that are here on the special come edition on, episode. Let's in. bring them up. We got Skank Hunt shouting you out. The Finchta. Much love, Skank Hunt. What's up, Skank? What's up? What's going on, Mr. Garrett Kerfkoff? Dude, that, that's like a, what is that? Uh, Dagestan last name? I don't even, what is Kirkhoff, that? Kerfkoff, bro. I think, I, think, uh, I think that's easier to say than some of these, um, you know, some of these names across from our Bellator stars, True. you know? True, so uh, true. I'll take that one all day. Kirkhoff, what's up, bro? Kirkhoff, let's go. What's popping, boys? Chat. What's popping? Look at Brand these savages all popping. coming through. Come on, I man. I bet Mike picks all Bellator guys. You're going to find out soon. <laughs> is man. it the Bellator shirt? Is <laughs> it the Bellator shirt? West Coast? Or do you just know me because we're both on the West Coast? You trying to read my mind here? Stay <laughs> tuned and we'll figure that one out. Let's go. Yeah, we'll get into it in a minute, man. And uh, the odds, my bookie doesn't have the lines yet. Age has to talk. Listen, man, we'll, we'll do our absolute best to see but i don't know i got no pull over that type of stuff man i just think if you bet them where you can i do have all the odds listed across multiple uh bookies so i'm looking forward to reading those out and if you like the show he's right money line that is the promo code for my bookie go get yourself a little discount when you sign up at my bookie even if you can't bet on these fights you will be able to bet on most fights bellator and ufc included Yes, this is a special event, guys. I want to get into it, man. I'm ready to just rock with the first one. Go. Um, I, I'm gonna go through the full Bellator card for you guys, and uh, maybe we'll even give the people a uh, lock of the week for this one. Let's see, man. Let's yeah. start it off though with the first fight on the card. We have it between team. I mean, even though he's not, I don't believe he's actually Dagestani, but he's with Team Habib, Team Dagestan, yeah. Team Eagle, Gadzi Rabandov versus Koji Takeda. Mike Finch, I'm really looking forward to this fight. Like we're talking about the ring versus the cage, I do have some questions about how Rabondadov is going to do with that adaptation. Now, I am going to tell you straight out, I'm still going with the OV, brother. You know I don't like picking against OVs ever. This fight here, even in the ring, I think that the open mat takedowns will be of success for Godzi. Good timing, and I see him countering some of Takata's shots with takedown attempts. I'm curious, uh, what is the Finch man thinking about this fight here? I think Takeda is a better strike, man. Takeda is definitely light on his feet. It's going to be an interesting problem for Godzi Rabadanov to deal with. You know, uh, if you watch Godzi's Bellator fights, which I've been lucky enough to sit there cage side and watch him fight JJ Wilson, who's a pretty damn good striker. JJ was smacking his legs up with kicks. He was doing fine. It was like two or three takedowns ended up being the difference for him. And Islam Makachev was in his corner in that fight. I walked back with both of them and I heard Islam say to Godzi, he's like, you know, why are you striking with these guys? We just wrestle them, like just wrestle them and get it over with. That's it. You know, I'm putting words in his mouth there. But essentially what he said was just take them down. Just take these guys down and you've got them. In this fight, I think if he plays a conservative game like that, I'll be interested to see how the judges go, right? This is a funny one for me because beyond the, the ring versus cage thing, which I think is the biggest difference for sure, the other difference is the judging, right? How are the judges going to look at the competition? Are they going to be fair or not? We're going to find all of that out. 
I'm assuming they will be. And if that's the case, I'll go with Godsey here. I'll, I'll say he'll take a decision. But AJ, I, I would I would caution people who want to bet on this fight. I think that Takeda is a good striker, very mobile, which will make him harder to take down than some of the other opponents that Godsey's done well against. And Godsey obviously the best the better wrestler in this matchup not the not the most active ground and pound i've ever seen i wonder if this thing could be close right i'm gonna go with bellator's godzi rabatinov however if you're thinking about betting on this card there are probably better bets than this fight agreed bro yeah i think that this one here it's a guy who comes from a good team has good skills but i don't think he should be like crazy wide because actually I'm going to be honest with you. I'm looking at the odds in front of me and I have a big list of lines. Mike Finch, they vary from as high as minus 500 to as low as minus 280. I don't really think those are the best plays of the week. That's the honest truth here with this one. I think there's better no. bets to make also. I do feel like Rabanidov gets a decision, but if Takeda pulls off that upset decision, my mind isn't blown. Like Mike Finch brought up, man, the striking is good. We're going to see an adaptation from ring to or cage to ring rather for Rabanidov. And it's a concern enough so that I wouldn't want to be throwing money down on the line. I don't feel like it's the worst bet of the year if you did bet it, but it's not my favorite one. Yeah, Takeda should use his hands, stay moving left, stay moving right. As long as he keeps mobile in this fight, it'll be close. It should be a fun one. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it's one where when it goes to the judges' scorecards, you know, I'd, I'd be biting my nails a little bit. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It, this, this, one, this one should be competitive, and it'll be a fun way to set up the card. You know, I like that this is the first fight of the night. Godzi Rabadinov, you know, make no mistake about it, one of the best wrestlers we have in Bellator. And, um, you know, you, you could definitely see that come through in this fight. If he catches a kick or something, he should be able to get the takedowns. But AJ, I'm telling you, it's a lot easier to take somebody down in the cage, even when they take them down an open mat, which, you know, um, is, is a sign that, that maybe they will be fine in the ring. But even when you take somebody down an open mat, it's like, when you shoot that takedown, you also have it in the back of your head. If this guy sprawls on me, I'm going to be a freight train and I'm running him into that fence. You have that little confidence in your head. When, when, when you shoot and you catch those hips, I can keep running. In the, in, in the ring, it's harder to do. And you know what? That's an interesting note, too, because you're talking about, let's say they get against the ropes and then a sprawl position happens. Something that Ryzen has that isn't common amongst a lot of the organizations in the States. Knees to the head, kicks to the head. The rule set changes. Let's say you see Takeda sprawls. He starts dropping some vicious knees. It only takes one. I mean, we've seen guys in the UFC crumble from these accidental fouls. Imagine a, a direct shot. So, yeah, definitely, man. This is I'm more excited just thinking about the versatility, right, with the different rule sets these guys are coming from. It's going to be yes. interesting, bro. Yes, this is a great example of that, right? A clash of styles. Uh, you know, a Godzi Rabadanov, definitely a guy who I would say I, I, I'd prefer if I was his coach, right? I prefer to put him in the cage. So uh, a fun one to kick the night off. Jason Graham, that was one of the coolest comments I've seen. I'm telling AJ to pull it up right now. Or is it? The, the most recent one. What you going to do, brother, when Mike Fence and the largest arms in MMA run wild on you, brother? <laughs> is that an okay Hulk Hogan? Is that okay? Well, I thought that was going to be like a knockoff Chael Sonnen, man. I think you got to go GSP, Mike Finch. We use the GSP. I am, I am not impressed by your performance. <laughs> Legendary. I go to Ryzen. Uh, yeah, bro. I, um, I, I, I have not lifted in a while. I went over to Taylor Biagi's jujitsu school in Chicago. So I gassed out in like 30 seconds, bro. Sure. I don't know. I've, there's all this cake and bullshit food over the holidays has got to me, bro. So I got work on these arms again, but I appreciate you looking out for me, Jason. Thank that's, you. That's, you're looking like a young chail stunning, bro. You're looking like <laughs> a young chail. <laughs> uh, young. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'll Let's take go. the young. Thank you. Let's go, my man. Let's keep running up the card. Next fight, it's a damn good one. It's Juan Archuleta oh, taking hi. on Sul Chu Kim. Mike, I'll be honest, man. Archuleta looks so good, even in loss with stocks. Like, you got to be confident in his abilities. But, I'm dude, Kim on the other side is a dangerous man. This guy just beat Kiro Masa in the last one, who's fighting in our next fight, the featured bout of the night. He comes from the uh, South Korean scene. This guy's fought around good good spots. And I believe, I want to make sure I'm right, but I think he fought Gamrot not all that long ago. And that was his most recent uh, loss. No, mixing him up with another guy in the card. My apologies. Not not That's that right. one. Not Kim. My apologies. He, he, he fought uh, Bibliano Fernandez. Yeah. Good names, though. Yes. 
Yes, for sure, for sure. But not that much activity, AJ. I believe he is, um, what, fought three times since 2017. You can't like that uh, for yeah. Sochol Kim. And um, and the 2-1-1, and one, but the loss was a submission uh, since then. He got out-wrestled by um, uh, Fernandez, uh, Bibliano Fernandez. And, dude, I think Juan Archuleta's wrestling is criminally underrated criminally underrated you know and we're always underrated very hard to out grapple he was able to do that um you know stats is not easy to take down no matter what you guys think after watching that uh wrestling clinic that uh that um uh, uh danny sabatello was able to put on him stats won the fight stats did more damage in the fight that's why he got the nod but no doubt about it there were some takedowns happening actually stats is a good wrestler and it just shows you juan archuleta is a problem in the grappling. I think that's going to be a huge problem for Kim because Archuleta is a complete mixed martial arts fighter too. What are you going to do? Knock him out? Very difficult, man. For for Stotts to sail that head kick up there, that's the exception, not the rule. I got Juan Archuleta dominating this fight, brother. I think he dominates all three phases, but the takedowns included, he might get Kim out of there. Interesting. Okay, you're going to go stop it. I'm going to lean decision. I am with you on Juan Archuleta. I do think Kim has a ton of volume that he throws, and I feel like he's just always in the face, so I expect it to be a good scrap between these two. I think Archuleta, though, he gets the hand raise. I do think he's a little slicker with the stand-up. He's got the better wrestling. I think he should land more, win the fight on the cards, I'm going to say. But is there uh, you know, a good chance that somebody's going out? Absolutely, man, because I'm thinking a few of these fights are going distance. But, you know, I'd be damn happy if somebody gets uh, gets stopped, man. I want to see some some fuego action because I got to be up early for this card, Mike Finch. Archuleta's been looking fuego to me, man. Yeah. When I when I saw that Enrique Barzola performance, I was like, oh, shit. That's what this guy's capable of. Nobody gets Enrique Barzola tired, man. Juan Archuleta is a machine out there. And, uh, you know, it really seems like the team over there at HBUTC, HB Ultimate Training Center, Tiki Gosen, uh, you know, Paul Herrera, the whole the whole coaching staff it looks like they've really dialed in on him man you know because for a while there the focus was on tj dillashaw and the focus was on you know brian ortega or, or, or whoever it was i think the focus is on juan archuleta right now i think the spaniard puts on a career performance man i i, I am quite confident in the spaniard in this matchup shout out to him juan archuleta finishes this fight in the third round got the back throwing punches might even slap on a submission the odds for this fight have Archuleta sitting at minus 200 and then Kim at plus 160. I like the favorite one, Archuleta. Mike Finch likes him too. I do think if you were going to back somebody fighting in Ryzen, a guy with the skill set of Archuleta, the consistency that he brings, That's I right. think that could be a quality bet if you were looking to throw down. I definitely like betting Archuleta more than Rabandinov, uh, just simply because I, I think the stylistic like transition towards the ring, I think Archuleta might even do better. We might see more damage out of Archuleta, so I, I don't think the stoppage is a crazy thought. He's more well-rounded than Godzi Rabadanov is. You know, mm -hmm. Godzi Rabadanov is getting good at striking. He's get it good at getting good at submission grappling. His wrestling is excellent. Archuleta is dangerous everywhere, brother. I, I think he has no issue getting his takedown stuff. He's going to keep coming forward with striking going to be a problem man I, I i would definitely feel a lot more comfortable uh if you guys told me that uh you you, you put your money on archuleta instead of godzi just based on the matchups and, and based on how they're going to perform in that ring i think juan archuleta's style is ring friendly mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think so i'm excited to sell for this fight mike this is this is a good one it heats up even more so with the next one it's just getting better and better it's kyoji horaguchi <laughs> versus hiromasa ogekubo a trilogy, actually. This is the third time these two right. guys have faced off, and we've seen Kyoji win the past two. The last one specifically won a quality performance where he actually got a lot of damage off. Like Hiromasa can have moments against Kyoji, but just overall, Kyoji seems to have him in every position. I think he's a faster striker. I think he's more powerful with ground and pound. I think he's heavier in the top position. And I think eventually he'll work towards even landing takedowns. Hiromasa will fall. I'm going to say Kyoji Horaguchi, probably by decision again, though. I wouldn't blow my mind if there was a stoppage. With the 10-minute first round, I would actually lean Horaguchi by TKO. But because it's that five-minute first round, I think I'm going to go Kyoji on the cards to get it done. 
Kyoji on the cards makes sense to me. For those of you guys who saw Kyoji Horiguchi um, versus Sergio Pettis for the for the belt, you know, Kyoji Horiguchi was dominating that fight and then gets caught with a crazy spinning back fist. And then I don't think he really looked himself against Patchy Mix. Maybe Patchy Mix just does that to people, AJ. I mean, Patchy Mix does. is a problem. All credit yes. goes to Patchy Mix. But if we're talking about, you know, uh, one out of 10, how Horiguchi performed, that was the worst performance I've seen from him, man, because Horiguchi is one of the best strikers in the world. Horiguchi is extremely good at karate, one of the best I've ever seen in MMA. I'll say it, I think the best karate in MMA right now. I, I don't know. Who, who do you think's got him on the karate? He's Steven Wonderboy. It's a matter of, um, you know, how much damage is Horiguchi going to do? And then uh, also, do you have somebody in there who's dangerous enough, like a Sergio Pettis, who can pull a knockout out? Hermosa, Hermasa is not that guy. Hermasa always goes to decision. He's a decision machine. So if you take that risk factor out for me and you take that, you know, ability to knock Kyoji Horiguchi out, I don't see how Kyoji Horiguchi drops this fight, man. Kyoji Horiguchi is extremely comfortable in fighting in a ring. He's a rising fighter himself. You know, he came over to Bellator, but, you know, they're, they're, they're going to feel, uh, you know, nice and warm and fuzzy feelings when Kyoji's stepping back in the Super Saitama arena. He's been there before. I think he's going to be very comfortable. I think he's going to give an awesome performance, man. Unfortunately, the odds makers think so, too. Yeah, dude, crazy wide. And I just want to give some, I guess, confidence towards the side of Archuleta real quick. Look at common opponents, Patchy Mix. Archuleta gave Patchy Mix that 1L. So another right. way to just hype up Juan Archuleta here against right. Kim. I think the odds might be too good for Archuleta. Now for this fight, Hiro Masa plus 550 underdog, minus 800 you're looking at. Kyoji Horiguchi. Yeah, you can find it as low as minus 555, but like majority of places are like seven, minus 700 or more. Like Kyoji's crazy. He's Dagestan favorite status. The, the problem with betting a minus 800 line on Kyoji Horiguchi is how much damage is Kyoji Horiguchi going to do? He is one of the hardest guys to hit in the world. His striking is phenomenal. But before you go out there and bet your house on a minus 800 line with him, think that these two have fought twice before. It, it's been a little competitive. Yeah. Um, you know, there, 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 are some, there are some things that, that, that make me not love the bet on this fight. Although I must say... You know, we're going Horiguchi all day. Horiguchi all day long. But, like, the odds are just crazy wide. Yeah. I, I'd rather go Juan Archuleta, who I think has got a great chance to win. And with uh, a little bit more uh, playable odds, really. That's what I'd say the ultimate difference is. I do want to bring up, I do have a, a prop here. Let's see. The over two and a half in this fight here is something to note. It is minus 105. Decent little line. But you have such yes. limited availability of props. Like I, I have them just for just Horiguchi down for a couple of just Oga Kubo. And it's only at one sports book that personally I don't use. So I didn't really want to mention the props too much. But if you do have it available, I do think over 2.5. Yes, this fight's going to a decision. Yeah. Uh, I would be very surprised to see a finish. If if it's going to finish, it's going to be Kyoji Horiguchi. Yes. Put, yes. put, you know. Put, uh, put putting this fight away and yes. and you know showing out and, and performing well. You saw him out there with Mike Brown. If you guys have seen the in focus episodes that Bellator is doing out there in Tokyo, they're following him around, kind of embedded style, and uh, going into the gyms with them. And Kyoji's in his happy place, man. He looks good. He's looking sharp. He's like, I don't know what they were doing, like buying like little pro wrestler masks or something. Uh, he, he was saying it was look, looking like Mike Brown. He he's definitely. Um, you know, he, he's definitely in his element, AJ. Um, with that line, I don't know about that shit, bro. I don't know about that. I think me and you have been agreeing pretty hard here. Yeah. Uh, out of the three lines, honestly, my my the the the, the one if you if there was no odds, right? The the yeah. one I'm most confident in is Archuleta, and that's the best odds. All right, might as well play that one. That's the one to bet. And I want to bring up this line here. MMA locker room, what's going on, buddy? Um, I was doing Bellator Media. AJ looks sucked out. Were you in you weren't in Japan doing the media? This this was recent, and this was like in recent weeks, or was this uh like a while back? I'm curious because I mean, I don't know. What do you think, Mike Finch? A AJ's a big boy, man. He's not talking about you, he's talking about AJ. No, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. No, I thought that it's <laughs> a AJ McKee is a big boy when I saw. AJ McKee weigh in against Patricio Pitbull when he fought him uh, for the 145 title the first time. I was like, how the fuck 
does this kid make 145 pounds? That is crazy to me. AJ, now he's only got to make 155. I got to think that's doable for him. Um, 145 was nuts, though. So I'm a much happier that this fight is at lightweight. Makes me less concerned. Although jet lag gets to everybody. We're all human. You know, when I was yeah. talking to Khabib before that Islam Makachev fight, first thing he was saying to me is like, brother, we go out there 40 days. He's saying 40 days beforehand. Holy they don't want to play around with jet lag. So cutting weight with the jet lag, that might suck. I'm much more comfortable with him making lightweight, though, AJ. Facts, facts. And it was virtual. Interesting to know. So that's recent. That's relevant. That's something interesting, man. We'll talk about the main event soon. We'll get into it. Some of you guys might know what I'm thinking there, but for those that don't, you'll find out shortly. But let's get to our co-main event. Good fight. Patricio Pitbull yeah. versus Kleber Koike Erbst. What a last name on this guy. What a full name on this guy, man. I, I had to look it up and listen to it, man. And I still don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but you know, <laughs> we're, we're riding with it. it Sounded good to me. It sounds great, right? Patricio Pitbull is Bellator's GOAT. I always say that. And I think that uh, he's in a fight that he's going to dominate. It's going to be a destruction. This is a beating. This is a guy in herbs who relies solely really on jujitsu. I'm looking at the stand up, and I'm like, this guy's swimming with a shark. Patricio is going to kill him, man. He's going to land a beautiful punch. He's going to drop him. And I think Patricio might choke him out just to be like, yeah, you, you missed a submission. I can strangle you. So maybe club and sub in this one here. I originally said knockout, but inside of the distance is like the ultimate pick. I think Patricio's getting it done in the first two rounds, and it's going to be violent, and it's going to look like a mismatch because I think Patricio Pitbull is one of the best featherweights in the world. Patricio Pitbull by submission is actually a ballsy call, bro. That is uh, that is fun that you went with submission because that's the one place where this fight is actually dangerous, right? There is, I mean, if you watch like Gamrot versus Erbst, Gamrot is just walking him down and taking him down at will. You cannot have that problem against a Patricio Pitbull. Patricio Pitbull, more patient than that, doesn't like to storm forward like he used to back in the day. He used Back in the day, he was a Pitbull, bro. He was running at you like you let him off the leash. This is a little different. Now he, you know, studied karate with, um, you know, uh, Captain Eric brought him to the Olympic Training Center and he worked with the karate fighters and he kind of implemented that into his game with his Muay Thai and his boxing. And the karate stance is much more patient and explosive only in moments, right? So he's not going to walk him down like Gamrot did, but the way Gamrot was able to take Erps down at will, I think that's an option for Patricio. And what are you going to do? Guillotine Patricio? He doesn't really have a neck. And I know somebody at home is going, wait, Mike Finch, Patricio just recently lost via guillotine to AJ McKee. Guys, AJ McKee had him out on his feet. That is not what we're talking about here. Erbst is not that dangerous on the feet. Erbst is not that good of a wrestler. He is nasty, nasty on the ground. But now we're going to talk about the Bellator GOAT, Patricio Pitbull. You're telling me that the most experienced fighter on this card, Patricio Pitbull, is the one you're going to bet on to make a mistake? I don't see it. Patricio Pitbull dominates this fight. He controls where this fight takes place. And I bet you that's on the feet. And I bet you he is blasting Erbs with some huge punches and ends up getting that knockout win. I'll go Patricio Pitbull, the Bellator GOAT, getting a knockout on Saturday. The odds for the fight here are very wide, favoring Patricio around minus 450 for Patricio Pitbull. And Clever Koike Erbst plus 300. Crazy odds. Pitbull by sub, though. I want to read the line off Mike Finch. It's mm -hmm. plus 525. Knockout is plus 170. Uh, but yeah, man, that, that plus 525, uh, that's interesting. Inside distance is only minus 110. So if you Mystic Mac it, granted, that's one book that I'm seeing it have. But I feel like the night before the fight, we should get some props everywhere. I'm right. hoping at least. I like that sub prop at plus 500 or more. Pitbull. He's going to get a win here. He's getting it done. It's about how he's getting it done, and I'm going to Mystic Mac for the sub for the big plus, man. The big plus money out there, club and sub. That's gangster, dude. If Patricio Pitbull submits him, that will be quite the statement, that right? Will. Patricio's will. just so much better at striking and wrestling, and he's so smart. I think he's going to be patient. It'll, it'll look similar to his last couple performances. You saw how he dealt with AJ McKee. You saw how he dealt with uh, Adam Boric, you know? patient on the outside hard to get to when you close that distance you're getting smacked 
That'll work perfectly in this fight. I think um, Patricio Pitbull, another guy who's built to fight in the ring, right? Not a guy who likes to like hold you on the fence, Randy Couture style. He's going to be dangerous in the middle of that ring. Patricio Pitbull is going to look great out there. I can't wait for this one, man. Great co-main event that sets us up for the main event. Make sure you guys smash the like button if you haven't. And if you're new, subscribe. This is a special edition of the Money Line. It's Bellator right. versus Ryzen. It's a fantastic show, and I'm looking forward to it. Mike Finch, Team Bellator in the house. And Mike, AJ McKee versus Roberto De Sosa in our main event. Let me let Bellator Mike Break this one down. What do you think, my man? Let's go. <laughs> Give us the take, brother. I think Roberto de Souza is very impressive, man. The best, this is going to be quite a compliment, the best fighter off of his back in MMA right now. I think Souza is a huge problem on the mat, and it's a very interesting problem for AJ McKee to try to solve because AJ McKee, a submission specialist in his own right. I mean, AJ McKee kind of blends his wrestling and his jujitsu together. Chael Sonnen said, AJ McKee does things I don't even know the name of. It's like, Chael, you should probably know the name of the 100% neck crank that's been around for, for, for a little while now, you know, but, uh, but that is... Chael's right in that Chael's an MMA expert and he doesn't even know some of the techniques AJ's doing. What he's trying to say is this kid is cutting edge jujitsu himself. AJ McKee's nasty on the ground himself, but could that get him into trouble here, right? I want to see AJ McKee stay on his feet, use his vastly superior striking and wrestling to dominate this fight. I'm going to bet that he does do that. I think AJ McKee can use his legs here really well. And every time Souza wants to wrestle, he can get him off of him like he's in a wrestling match. AJ McKee's used to wrestling with star wrestlers who've come through the body shop gym here in Long Beach, California, not too far from me. And, um, you know, his dad, Antonio McKee, a wrestler, they should treat this fight like box kickboxing with wrestling. He should dominate if that's the case. However, if shit gets wild like it did in that Spike Carlisle fight and we start going on the ground a lot, I'm telling you what, man, this guy off of his back is a huge problem. AJ McKee really needs to mind his P's and Q's. That's where that experience that a Patricio Pitbull has comes into play, right? Patricio Pitbull knows how to win an MMA fight. AJ McKee, more wild, more, uh, you know, less, less expected what he's going to do. He might jump. He might spin. He might take you down. He might try to kick you in the head. I think that that striking is going to look really good out there. I think he's going to blast Souza, but he probably will have a tough time putting him away because that jujitsu is such a threat. So because of that, I'll say AJ McKee goes all rounds. This thing goes to a decision in a fun fight, but one where we see it's going to look kind of like 1990s MMA AJ. I think Souza absolutely needs it on the ground, and AJ McKee is definitely going to want it on the feet. Mike Finch, Mike Finch, I'm putting the shades on, my friend. Listen, uh -oh. I'm going uh -oh. with Sosa. I'm going for the submission. I think that he's going to shock a lot of people. I feel like AJ McKee going to Japan is not going to be ready for what's coming. The ring favors Sosa. I also think AJ McKee, if the striking has a real advantage, definitely. I agree. As soon as they go to the floor, AJ McKee is extremely confident in his grappling. I think it gets anyone. I know he spoke about Souza having some abilities and being very nasty on the mat. And I saw, you know, he said he's gonna he's gonna fight it with a, with a smart game, but he's not gonna go out and be dumb. What I think is gonna happen though is he's gonna fall into a scrap on the mat with a guy who's so scrambly. I think at some point it's gonna be one. Mistake leads to submission. I think Souza is the guy that finds the sub. I say he submits AJ McKee. If they're striking, yes, I agree. It's all McKee. He's got a huge edge stand up. Souza's awkward as hell on the feet. Decent little weird punches that he throws, but he's not a specialist on the feet by any means. If it goes to the ground, that's where he shines. I'm going to say it does. I'm going to go Souza submission in the second round, Mike Finch. I'm going to the dark side of Ryzen for this one here. He's going rising, so that's why I'm putting oh, on the freaking Bellator He's got the gloves Bellator's glove. Mike, I don't have a rising glove. Okay? I'm gloving this up to love, respond to this, this bullshit. <laughs> what do you mean? 
What do you mean? Uh, this you know, is great, my Be Chris. like uh, a little competitive on the feet. What do you what do you do you think that this guy is gonna deal with the hands that AJ McKee has? AJ McKee is gonna give him a three piece and a soda, and the soda might be a left shin, it might be a right shin, it might be a knee to the face. AJ McKee is so much better at striking than Souza. This fight should be illegal. AJ McKee should blast this man into another universe. This dude is gonna want nothing to do on the feet with an AJ McKee. You tell me, does he last three minutes straight on the feet with AJ McKee? Brother, I don't think so. Mike Finch, I got to say that's a meme with you on the gloves. I hope <laughs> that it's screen grabbed and I see it on Instagram, by the way, man. That's 10 out of 10. I don't think he'll Thank last you. on the feet. but He's going to be pulling guard, bro. He's going to be laying on his I back think like, I think you know. Will. The Noguera brothers against Fedor or some shit. He's gonna be he's gonna be pulling guard like Ryan Hall, bro. It's gonna be like Noguera Bob Sapp. Yes, I agree with you, man. And we're, we're going we're going <laughs> with Noguera out here. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Souza for the sub, man. I'm going against the grain. I'm gonna go dog money. I think he's gonna shock people. I've been watching him for years, and like he's always just quietly off in the distance. The guy's got insane jujitsu, and if McKee is willing to even in the slightest engage in that grappling, I think it could be trouble now. If AJ McKee really just is constantly disengaging and they do stand, I could see him dropping Souza and Souza might even tap to a strike. We've seen him tap to a strike in that yeah. one loss. So yeah. that's a little bit of a concern. I'm going dog. Do I think Souza is going to find a submission? I do feel like in the cage in Bellator, I'm probably going to AJ McKee. Mm. But because it's the ring, because of potential travel delays, different type of intangibles that traveling across the world can bring to you. I think that Souza pulls it off. If AJ McKee does win it, though, it's a legacy win, I feel like. Like I saw. Admit one more thing to me. Yeah. AJ McKee's best in the center of the ring, center of the cage. Yeah. He's not one of these wrestlers who pushes you into the fence. He's not a Khabib. He's a guy who can wrestle and strike in the center of the cage. That's where he's at best. I think AJ McKee kind of his style does work with the ring. Am I crazy for that? No, you're not crazy. He might him, look good in the ring, bro. He could look good. We're going to see. We're going to find out. I think Souza, though, pulls it off in this one, dude. I, I feel something about it. I was I was teetering early, and then I said, no, man, I'm seeing Souza by submission. We shall find out, Mike. But if, if he comes out and he gets the sub, they're going to say, damn, this guy was wild, but he, he saw something crazy. I'm telling you. I think uh, something I mean, weird's happening. I got to give credit to you, of course. How dare, I, how dare I pick all of the Bellator fighters, of course. No, you had to, Mike. So Finch. Listen, I, I, I deserve it. It's honest, MMA. Though. Of course, in the comment section, trying to get me to fight again. You want to see me see. in Bellator gloves? Take a screenshot, my friend. Take a screenshot. Take a screenshot, my friend. This is I got you right now, bro. You can hit up my guy, Mario. He runs the Bellator shop. He will hook you up with some Bellator gloves. Bellator.com. Have a pair of your own hype MMA, and then we could wear them. Okay, they're awesome. I really like Bellator gloves. One of the things I like about them, you'll notice as my hands relaxed here, it's curved. All the UFC gloves are like this, right? Bellator fighters are like this. Less eye pokes, brother. There is less. Dude, I got to ask you, Mike Finch, what are the odds that if one of the followers, one of the fans, the Moneyline fanatics gets a pair, will you will you sign them and send them back Of to course, bro. That's they don't want me want. to sign their gloves. They're going to be like, hey, Mike, my you get Patricio gloves. Pitbull to sign my gloves? And I probably would do that as well, yes. yes. Um, you know, so uh, I'll I'll get you guys a better signature than me. I'll get you AJ McKee or some shit, you That's know? Sick. I got you, fam. I'm going to be out here, uh, Bellator LA, Fedor. I mean, you could get better signatures than Mike Finch. Although, I have a nice signature. I'll sign another one for you. But um, definitely, if you guys are coming to Bellator LA, hit your boy up and uh, we'll see what we could do for you guys definitely i'll come and take a picture with you guys cage side i always love that love seeing you guys at the events and one of these days one of these days we're gonna get that florida boy aj devito out to a bellator card as well listen i i, I eventually will be there mike finch i gotta read the odds off i didn't do it yet man we were going so Please. fucking wild aj mckee's the favorite he's around minus 215 upwards of plus 195 for the Souza, and then also looking at the props for this one bet online has them so i'm going to note this to you guys stay tuned for the props i expect them to be dropping for all of the fights on this card in the next day or two uh de souza to win via sub is plus 400 mckee via knockout sitting at plus 135 so seems like they're expecting a mckee ko in this one good fights man good fights mike good fights and as far as they go i think the best thing that you guys could take away from what aj and i discussed today 
is the two bets that look the, the the let me put it this way the 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 two fights the odds makers are are kind of sleeping on right is very clear to me it's Juan Archuleta and it's Patricio Pitbull the odds are not wide enough these guys should dominate these fights these are better fighters if they're not getting robbed by bad judging if they're not i don't know falling through the ropes and breaking their ankle i don't know i don't know what the what they're looking at i think Juan Archuleta dominates i think patricio pitbull dominates i don't think those two fights are close i think those are two clearly outstanding ones so you guys look for locks and parlays and whatnot i'm kind of getting ahead of myself here I, i'm i'm really thinking that those two fights are mispriced let's get to the lock section right now mike finch i want your lock i'm gonna play it right here lock of the week for Ryzen versus Bellator, Bellator versus Ryzen, depending where you're at, they're flipping it each and every way. Mike Finch, my lock of the week has to be Juan Archuleta. I'll bring up his uh, graphic right here. It's Juan Archuleta over Kim. I think he gets it done. I think he's a great value line. You're sitting in that minus 200 range. That's not crazy. It's very playable. I think Archuleta goes out there, puts on a good performance, and gets himself a clean win. What's the Mike Finch lock, though, brother? Absolutely agreed with you on that one, man. Juan Archuleta's wrestling is criminally underrated. I think he looks great in all the training videos I've seen of him, man. He's focused. The whole team's focused in on him. It's a good matchup. He's out there in Japan uh, sparring and training right now, and he looks phenomenal to me. So I do think Juan Archuleta absolutely d -d 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 dominates this fight, man. And, um, you know, he's one of Bellator's best. People want to sleep on him because of two close fights he had. But, um, you know, and, and let's, let's be honest. I mean, it's a beautiful KO, beautiful KO by Rafael Stotts over Juan Archuleta. I don't see that shit going down, man. I think that's the, you know, that that's the exception, not the rule. So Juan Archuleta, one of the best fighters in the world, an absolute complete, complete mixed martial artist, which will really help him in the change of scenery, a ring, not a cage, Tokyo, Japan, not California. He gets the job done. AJ, we are in agreement on our lock because the odds should be wider than this. Do you want to do a parlay, Mike Finch? You feeling Absolutely. one? Let's jump to the parlay segment. All the competition that try to compete, stand back, watch the bomb drop. Parlay time. Mike, we got limited <laughs> amounts of fights to parlay up here with this card, but I do think there are some quality parlays. For me personally, how I'm looking at it, I think you ride with the likes of a Juan Archuleta. You add in the likes of a Patricio Pitbull. And I think that right there at minus 120, quality play. So now you're like, damn, I'm playing minus 120, but I'm not getting any value. You want to add some value to the line? You go against AJ McKee and you go D'Souza for the last one. But I'm going to tell you guys. He's back on, bro. I, Don't make me put these back on, AJ. Come Mike, on, here's what I'm going to say. I got more. I got more. Let me finish it. Let me finish it. Let me finish it. I would say this. I would much rather money line Souza and go hard on a parlay with my two most confident picks being Archuleta and Patricio Pitbull. That's what I'll say. But if you're just like, I need value, I need value. But it's still not great. It's plus 400 something. At that point, just throw money line on that one. Mike Finch, let's hear the parlay you got for me, brother. Look, from, from, from wide to narrow, I, I, I like yeah. Juan Archuleta over Kim. Uh, then I would like Patricio Pitbull over Earps. Then, actually, after that, honestly, I think A.J. McKee over DeSouza. Okay. I, I I know you you love the guard That's of DeSouza. Bro, DeSouza is so nasty off of his back. I'm not trying to take anything away from that. I, I started off by saying I think he is literally the most dangerous athlete in mixed martial arts off of his back. That's only one small aspect of a fight. AJ McKee's so good at jujitsu himself, a great wrestler himself, and his striking is phenomenal. It's just going to be a really tr a lot of trouble with AJ McKee. And we actually saw somebody in the comment section saying AJ looks like he's having a tough weight cut. I mean, maybe if you guys take some external factors, but I would still like AJ McKee next. Then at that point, I would like Kyoji Horaguchi. Then at that point, I would like Godzi Rabatinov. But, um, you know, I see a lot of people with like a ton of confidence in Horiguchi and whatnot. And I know the odds are, are, are wide on that one. Honestly, I just take that as a reason, you know, to avoid that bet and to double up on what AJ and I are saying. You and I completely agree the parlay's got to be the Bellator GOAT, Patricio Pitbull, and the guy who is on fire right now. One of the best performances I've ever 
been cage side to see. Watch that Enrique Barzola versus Juan Archuleta fight and tell me you are not entertained. That is a complete mixed martial artist who knows how to go full speed. And I think he's going to go ahead and dominate that fight. That's absolutely the parlay to make. And um, do I sound confident about it? Guys, you bet do. responsibly, yeah. okay? I know I work for Bellator, but it's not like, uh, you know, anybody's telling me who's going to win, okay? They have to go out there and fight, you know? It's, uh, it's funny because... You know, I, I know like for UFC employees, they can't bet on UFC fights and whatnot. And, and I understand there should be precautions, but guys, we don't know who's going to win just because I interview the fighters, you know, just because we sit down and we, we see them eating lunch throughout the week and talk to them a little bit. Like how much inside info do you really get? It, it, you know, they have to go out there and have a fist fight, guys. So um, we don't know. That's what makes the sport so damn fun. But, um, you know, putting on my fan hat with you guys, since I am not in Tokyo, I'm going to go ahead and say the best parlay is what AJ just laid out there. And I think, uh, I think my confidence level is very high. I like it, man. Yeah, I'm with you. I think it's a great play. Mike Finch, Bellator versus Ryzen takes place in Japan. It's going to be a hell of a card. But before we sign things off, I do want to get your favorite Stefan Bonner moment. Rest in oh. peace to Stefan Bonner, the ultimate fighter one. What really made the UFC was not only that season, but was that fight with him and Forrest Griffin. So uh, he is forever in the Hall of Fame, and he's an immortal figure yeah. for the UFC's real legacy now. I mean, where they've yeah. become from where they were at at that point, it's pretty crazy to see. And Stefan Bonner, I think, deserves a lot of credit because him and Forrest Griffin put it on back in that first Ultimate Fighter season. That's for sure. That has to be it, man. That was a career defining performance, but bigger than that, it was, it defined the sport. You know, for those of you guys who've dug into that one, Dana White had the executives there. He had the, you know, spike TV people. He had all the important big wigs that, you know, needed to really see that this sport could be something. And Stefan Bonner and Forrest Griffin, not the most technical fight we've ever seen, but absolute barn burner, the type of fight where people are still talking about it in 2022 and uh, are about to be in 2023 as well next week. I really believe that uh, that's that that changed the sport. So remembering Stefan Bonner, it was absolutely his contribution was stepping up in that fight, absolutely fighting with his heart in a moment that was so pivotal for the sport, you know, live on spike TV, the ultimate fighter season one, it all came to, you know, this big, this big point where the UFC really needed to make it happen. And, you know, to give some credit to the UFC, they're the ones who paved the way as far as getting the sport regulated, uh, getting it legal in all these different states. I mean, they did a lot of groundwork that we need to respect. One of the people who were a part of that was Stefan Bonner. Stefan Bonner versus Forrest Griffin won meant a lot to the sport of mixed martial arts. And, um, you know, when I think of Stefan Bonner, I think of the, the Anderson Silva fight, Anderson calling him in, putting himself on the fence. You know, I think of Stefan's wars throughout the UFC. Good Muay Thai striker comes from the Chicago area, which is where I'm from. And, um, you know, a guy who fought with his heart always, you know, it was cool to hear Captain Eric Albarison talk about him and talk about them, them training for the Anderson Silva fight. He asked Captain Eric, he said, uh, you know, what what piece of advice you can give me? And, and Anderson had just beaten Shale Sun, and he was like, I guess just don't piss Anderson off, you know, be but pretend like you're his friend in there. Maybe it'll go a little differently. And uh, sure enough, Anderson was playing in that fight, which gave Stefan Bonner an opportunity. Um, Stefan Bonner is a very funny kind person always really good to fans which you know mma fighters generally are known for that but stefan bonner is like you know an outlier there as far as like he really really takes the time with people and was really accessible easy to talk to um what a good human all the best to his family and um a real loss man and somebody who should be respected as i mean he was never the champion he was never the best fighter in the world but somebody who should be respected as having made a significant impact on the sport Thank you for what you've done for MMA, Stefan Bonner. Beautiful, Mike Finch. That was great, man. For me, Stefan Bonner, you remember, you know, obviously the ultimate fighter, as we said, he fought John Jones before John Jones was what he now is. And uh, he had the war with uh, Christoph Zosinski, which he won. They had two fights right. with him. That was cool. Looking back, I remember before the Silva fight, I was excited for Stefan Bonner. I remember when he said this right here, he said, Thing I care about a belt. I beat Anderson Silva. I don't care about a belt. And he was fighting Anderson Silva, and obviously he didn't win that fight. But for him, like that was his title shot. So truly, he got the title shot in that Anderson Silva fight. 
goes down as one of the more entertaining guys ever. Funny as hell. I remember in one of the MMA awards, he was talking about, yeah, I remember being on the school year. They called me Stefan Boner or something like that. And I was <laughs> like, dude, Stefan's funny, dude. I like Stefan Boner, man. So rest in peace to the OG. Much love to him, man. And uh, The American <laughs> psycho, man. The That's American it psycho. It doesn't get, there aren't too many nicknames as cool as the American psycho. Right. Look at who he's fought. Mark Coleman, John Jones, Eric Red Schaefer, Forrest Griffin, Rashad Evans, Keith Jardine. I mean, this Mike Swick. I mean, the, the, the list, you know, Tito Ortiz, Anderson Silva. Dude, he fought everybody. Like big yeah. respect to somebody who does that, right? I mean, you don't you don't you don't see that all the time. Stefan Bonner will fight anybody. As you mentioned, and I forgot about that, fought John Jones on the come up. So you gotta love a Stefan Bonner fight. And um, yeah, sad, sad to see him leave us so soon. Rest in peace, Stefan Bonner. And let's talk a less somber subject, a little UFC news. Yeah, I put Shimaya Van Costa in there to spice things <laughs> up to get you guys excited. Well, <laughs> We do got some fight announcements. Cheeto Vera, Sanhagen, which is a good fight. Ooh, we got Dregas Duplessy fighting against Derek Brunson. That's Another an good fight. fight. That's damn good. And unfortunately, though, we don't have Robert Whitaker on that Australia card because uh, Paulo Costa isn't interested in doing the fight. He wants to re-sign with the UFC, but I believe he wants like the one fight deal to get more money. And then he probably wants to try to do the Jake Paul boxing thing. But like they're willing to pay him more, but then, then I give him a contract. They're going to give him some fights you you don't get that one and done unless you're like a special cause special case i think paulo costa could potentially win a boxing match against the paul brother he's a big boy so. he he's is a, a big, big boy. boy you know the, 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 the paul brothers don't like to fight nobody their size their age like that's uh the, he, he checks both of those boxes so mm -hmm. that would be interesting um paulo costa versus robert whitaker was a bad fight fight for paulo costa it's probably what this comes down to you know um and yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to fight Robert Whitaker either, bro. You know, I think that yeah. Paulo Costa's had some tough matchups, really. Yoel Romero, I mean, you know, he he's had he's had a couple of them that have been that have been brutal and yeah. and tough fights and all that. So he's kind of been through the ringer, and I think he's trying to see like, man, can I get a fight that makes sense for me? The Luke Rockhold one did, you know, and he got that. But um, uh, you know, I think he wants to fight for a belt when he's fighting somebody as high level as a uh, as a robert whitaker um so i i, I want to see paulo costa up there i think paulo costa is one of those guys who can win at 185 205 heavyweight like put paulo costa in the mix and he's a problem um you know but uh if, figure your money out paulo whatever man whatever whatever he's got to do i think i think his social media game may be number one in the business bro he is hilarious on he's social great. media and, and hanging out with him you know he's a very nice fun dude he's got his social media buddy following him around everywhere he was trying to get him he did get him backstage in bellator the dude did not have a pass and paula costa made sure they took care of him you know so the dude's filming a little documentary everywhere he goes i mean good for paulo he really knows how to market himself he is worth a lot and um uh that's I, i'm sure got to mean something monetarily i don't know what his contract looks like but the dude has us talking about him right now paula costa is uh you know we want to see him in big fights right yeah, I want to see him fight Whitaker, or I'd watch this fight on the screen, Shimaev and him. I think that's a great oh, matchup, insane. too. I'd want to see it. We'll see what happens, man. The uh, UFC ultimately will decide. I know nobody wants to fight Hamzat, so if it's like, listen, let's let's bring you up to 85. Let's do him and cost the number one contender fight. I'm all in. Everybody's all in. Two two comments I might as well hit. Dixon yeah. Sider is, 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 is calling me by name. Finch, my knuckles are itchy as fuck, bro. What can I do to make it go away? Aloe vera, Vaseline, any recommendations, please? Well, listen, AJ and I just started doing content for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships. I don't think you need nothing. I want to see That's you it. in there with Big Ben Rothwell, who just got mm -hmm. the knockout of the year. If your knuckles are itchy, let's see what you got against Kenosha's Ben Rothwell. I'm sure he can solve your itch problem. <laughs> Hey, this is a good one right here. This is actually what I was looking for, man. AJ, good job on the dirt bag, Shara Poutine, Magomedov story. Keep up the good work. Mike, have you seen that recent video? You, you got to, I just dropped it on a channel. I, I, you, know? it, you posted it seven minutes before we started. Yeah, the show. yeah you probably I'm didn't have time. Check it. I Although, will. I've been loving the content you've been dropping and I can't wait to watch it. Who gives you guys more content than AJ DeVito? Show him some love always. Much love, Mike Finch. I appreciate that for the people. Check that video out. The UFC just signed a savage Dagestani who's a little more than a savage just inside of that uh, that cage, man. He's a vicious guy, bro. And he like, dude, the, the story is crazy, though, because like I watched the video 
with the mindset of ah, he's an MMA fighter. Of course, they're throwing him under the bus instead. Nah, he started some trouble, man. He started some serious trouble. You guys will get it. It's the most recent video on the channel. You'll find it. Just go to videos. It says nearly killed a man on the uh, thumbnail. You can't miss it. People, we love you. We appreciate you. Mike Finch, go party it up, my brother. It was a blast. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to my first ever divorce party right now. I don't Ooh. know what to expect. Should I should I bring my pistol? Like, I don't is is this gonna be a problem? A divorce party? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to expect, bro. I've never been to a divorce party, <laughs> man. I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't know nothing. Bellator versus Ryzen going down in Tokyo, Japan. Make sure you watch you some fist fights. Thank you guys for tuning in. Check out our sponsor. It's right up there. It's my bookie. Use promo code MONEYLINE to get yourself a little discount. Even if you can't bet on these fights, we know you want to bet on some UFC fights coming up. And when there's no UFC card, yeah, that's right. AJ and I still came through to give you some picks. You're welcome. We love you. And we will see you guys next week for Moneyline. As always, Mike Finch and AJ DeVito, leave a comment. And if you don't have anything to say, put a W in the chat. Like and subscribe. We out. Peace, guys. And we will see you in the next one.